Jesus. A Wounded Fawn stars Sarah Lind, Josh Rubin, and is directed by Travis Stevens. What's up, guys? Welcome to a brand new 2022 review. We are nearing the end of the year, uh, and this was one that uh, I had heard some chatter about over the last couple weeks and wanted to check it out for myself. I tell you, Shudder, I swear to God, I'm not getting paid by Shudder. They constantly deliver really interesting and quality content, okay? And uh, this was quite surprising <laughs> and very discussion worthy. Wow. But anyway, first off, let's give you a quick plot synopsis. This movie starts with this auction and there's this character, Kate. Her job is to basically um, buy things for clients and, and she buys this statue. I can't for the life of me remember what the, the name of the statue is. I'll put it right here, but it's based on this, this Greek myth and it plays a major part in this movie. And this character, Bruce, uh, he lost the auction, you know, and he kind of has the same job as she does. And so eventually, without going into any spoilers, he ends up with the statue, okay? Our main setup here is Bruce. He goes out on this date with this character, Meredith. Uh, Meredith just got out of this really bad relationship, you know, because she's talking about it with her friends. But she decides to go out on this weekend excursion with this character, Bruce, which is not a good idea, uh, given that she just came out of this really bad relationship. But anyway, she goes on this weekend excursion. Bruce, I guess, uh, wooed her with his charms. So the rest of this movie, it takes place in this cabin. This is one of those cabin in the woods types of movies. And let me just say, because this is established really, really early on in the movie, so I think it's safe to say it, Bruce is pretty much a serial killer, all right? So that's kind of the premise here, is what happens when a serial killer goes out on a date and you kind of know that something bad's really gonna happen, and so you're just kind of waiting for it to happen. And it's just one of those situations where the audience knows more than one of the characters of the movie being Meredith, you know? So we're worried for Meredith and she doesn't even have a clue, which makes it fun. But this movie definitely has some big surprises in store, even though you kind of know that setup. Uh, there's still some things that you don't expect to avoid. Let me tell you, you don't expect to happen. And I would say this movie is broken up into two acts. The first act is, you know, them two in that date. And the second half, takes place out in the woods where it gets really crazy and psychedelic and weird and what the fuck. Now the first thing that really jumped out at me about this movie is just the cinematography. I mean this screams Italian horror all, all the way down to the bright red colored blood. I think every director they have a, a certain inspiration that they're going for with their movie. How do I want it to look? Cinematography is really, really important because it can make or break what your vision is going to be. And obviously the filmmakers wanted this movie to be kind of an homage to Italian horror. There are shots in this movie that look directly from other Italian horror films, you know, from especially like the seventies. And I love that, you know, I'm a, an Italian horror, you know, fanatic. I love that stuff. And so I was just eating this up along the way. Definitely getting some strong like Bava and Fulci vibes, um, you know, in, in terms of like the violence. You know, this definitely has that uh, graphic nature to it as well. This isn't like a soft horror movie at all. And a side note, um, you know, I'm always praising Shudder to death, but one gripe that I would have is the, the quality. You know, most of the time when I'm watching Shudder, the quality definitely looks like 480p, maybe even worse sometimes. So I wish they could kind of fix that because this movie was beautiful to look at. I just wish it would have been presented in like the full resolution, you know? And, and I can tell the difference because when I watch other streaming services like Hulu and like Netflix, it's crystal clear. And I know this movie is supposed to be kind of like a, a 70s homage type deal, but still, uh, you know, I can give you like Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. When I, when I watch the Blu-ray of that movie, it's a 16 millimeter movie, but it looks glorious, glorious. Whereas when you watch streaming, uh, you can get a lot of pixelation and just a, a muddy print. You know, that's, that's what you get. So if anything, it made me really want to buy the 4K or the Blu-ray if this movie comes out in that format, you know? So I think Shutter could definitely work on that aspect. 
And by the way, yes, this shirt uh, is, is faded on one side. I did leave it out when I was uh, running and I forgot to bring it back in. So the sun baked this shirt for like three days, but I love this shirt so much that I had to wear it anyway, okay? Just in case you're wondering why one side of my shirt looks like it's all faded. But anyway, back to the movie. This movie is really about a, a killer's comeuppance. You know, it's a revenge story. It's not your, you know, straight cut to the chase type of revenge story where somebody is, you know, torturing the killer throughout the rest of the movie. No. I mean, he's definitely being tortured throughout the rest of the movie, but it's very psychedelic. The second half feels like a, a witchcraft type of movie. So what if you're in the woods and you've pissed off whoever, nature is getting a little payback and a lot of payback. Look guys, there's some crazy ass sequences in this movie. There are some characters, you know, wearing these masks. You have this uh, like tree-like looking character. This, this movie takes a lot of liberties in terms of storytelling that might leave the audience scratching their head and you just kind of have to stay with it and, and see where the journey is going to take you. I even posted this thing on Killer Flicks, like give me some movies that are way too far up their own ass and I guarantee you, some might say this movie it fits into that category, you know? And to me, that's not a bad thing. I love uh, artsy movies or, you know, I know some people hate this term, but elevated horror. This fits directly into that. To me, that stuff's refreshing anyway. And plus, I just love the Italian horror nature of it as well. The music is glorious, you know, and, and there's like a, a, a couple songs here that play throughout. You know, the character Meredith, she's listening to this song. Uh, on the record player and then the song presents itself later in the movie kind of like what happened in your next and I love that type stuff because it just kind of puts a signature on the movie a stamp but when we're out in the woods and it's getting really weird uh, there's this like tribal music that's going on I mean look guys even like King Kong has elements of this stuff you know where they're at Skull Island and you got the um, the locals there and they're doing this freaking whole ceremony, getting the bride dressed up for, for Kong, and there's like a build up to it. This movie has that type of stuff. And lastly, I will say Sarah Lind as Meredith is quite mesmerizing, quite mesmerizing. Uh, and she's such a good character that you really are rooting for her along the way. You want her to live so bad. She definitely reminds me of like a cross between like Elizabeth Banks and Shania Twain, but I mean, just dashing, just quite mesmerizing, okay? A lot of those Italian horror actresses, film fatales, were quite gorgeous back in the day. And she does kind of resemble that, all right? Am I gushing a little bit? Now, as far as any cons, I kind of explored it there with the, uh, the old elevated horror thing. It gets really crazy in the second half, and it's definitely not going to be for everybody, okay? This is definitely not gateway horror. And some of you are going to really be scratching your heads like, where in the hell is this movie going? You know, this is a divisive movie. The first half, I think a lot of you are gonna love. The second half, holy guacamole, all right? I'll just say that. But I liked it though. I'm definitely gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a low purchase worthy. Even though I, I highly prefer the first half of the movie, I, I definitely dig where they were trying to take the movie. I don't think they, they landed perfectly, you know? I think they were, they were a little bit skittish there. But uh, overall, I still quite enjoyed the effort, all right? so. Uh, have you seen a wounded fawn? Let me know down in the comments. Looking forward to hearing them. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do free for Fridays. Follow the drum drums on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Drum them out.